much for having us here. Come by. This is where this is where everything happens. This is where the magic happens and where all the ideas turn into reality. All right. So this is also where we're going to be interviewing. Yep. So we'll take a few minutes to set up. I'll be right back with you. Sounds good. Hi, my name is Natalie Chan, and this is Own Your Future, a show all about helping young people uncover truths about life and work. Join me as I invite some of my favorite people to talk about what is it that they do, lessons they've learned, and how is it that they're taking charge of their own lives. Make sure you subscribe to Own Your Future's new episode every week. Or join us for our live stream chat. Find us on YouTube and podcast. Now it's time to own your future and start living a happy and fulfilled life. Welcome to Own Your Future. Today's guest is Adam Raby. Adam studied advertising and communications in university. Then he worked for a few advertising agency before becoming a professional rugby player. And then now he is the founder of Mazu Resortwear. Adam, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So lovely to have you because I've known you for some time now. Yeah. I remember you're actually a very key person to how Own Academy started because you started with us in the summer program. Yes, I, I remember it. I mean, I've always been a fan of yours. I think what you do for the education has always been good. So once you invited me to, when you pitched the idea to begin with, I was like, okay, that's a, the best way of learning. And I think in this like modern day age, I think it's such a great way to learn. So I was like, okay, I'm more than happy to help a friend and for a good cause. And oh, yeah. thank you. The kids loved it because you taught fashion. Like BC students get to experience what it means to be a fashion entrepreneur like yourself. Yeah, I think it's I think it's important to be hands on. For me, especially uh, my background and my teaching methods and learning methods, it's much better to be much more hands on. Because I, I recall that you mentioned that you were not the best student because you struggled with dyslexia. Yeah. How so was that for you? Growing up, for me, I was, ex I and I still am. I am extremely dyslexic. Like. Like very bad. Like I used to have extra time in class. I used to have uh, extra. Uh, I used to have um, a student that used to read things for me. Like I was wow. very, very bad. And uh, and yeah. And what was I and mean, how did that affect you as a as a child? Like did that? How did that? It, it was help? tough. Like I think growing up in Hong Kong, uh, people don't don't understand what dyslexia is, and people it's not very within the Chinese community, it's not a word that is very often accepted. Because and there's actually no word There's no Chinese direct translation. Dyslexia, right? Yeah, because yeah. in Chinese, it's either right or wrong. There's no like, yeah. like, you know, kind of getting it slightly right or slightly wrong. Growing up in Hong Kong, it was very difficult to get hold of, and especially my, my mother, I think, struggled to get understand it. And then when I went to school in England, it was about embracing my dyslexia and kind of, you know, learning how I can use dyslexia for my advantage rather than being negative. And I think that with that mind shift, it was all about kind of, yeah, I am bad at spelling. I am bad at grammar. Yeah, fine. But I'm also amazing at other things. And it's trying to embracing that important thing. And so how did you turn dyslexia into your superpower when you said that you embrace it? So what did you do with it? So for example, like nowadays, you've got such great technology for uh, like dictation. I was trying to write an email saying illustration. And I don't know off the top of my head to spell illustration, like if you ask me now, I probably wouldn't <laughs> do it. But uh, if, you know, with the with modern technology, you can just, you know, say into your phone or sure. like into your computer illustration and it types mm. it up and then that's a lot easier. Also about just trying to learn how to not let it be a hindrance, yeah. you know? One thing that I love about your story, I mean, and part of the reason why I invited you to be part of the teacher for our yeah. first program is because I'm so inspired by your journey. Because yeah. not only were you, you know, you had a challenge in, in school, but you also went and pursued advertising and communication, which actually requires you to have a lot of word ability, all the way to then becoming a professional rugby player and then now starting your own company. Yeah. So walk me through, how did you decide that advertising communications was what you wanted to study? Well, I think I knew quite early on that because of my dyslexia, I wasn't going to be a lawyer or I wasn't going to be an engineer. I knew I, knew I was creative. It's like I always took a different approach to things, which not necessarily a bad thing. Actually, I think it's an amazing thing. Like thinking outside the box, I think it's a great thing because, Absolutely. you know, quite stereotypically, you know, people in Hong Kong don't tend to think outside the box. So uh, I fell in love with advertising because I thought 
you know, it's how you communicate a message from a different perspective. And it was one way that I was like, okay, well, maybe that's the, the, the career that I want to pursue. And looked into different agencies and learned that, you know, that's where creative people go. And I'm not creative in terms of like drawing or like, um, you know, painting or anything like that. That's a different type of creativity. Uh, I was more like a problem and out of the box thinker. And, and then it was just trying to think about what goes with that and what if I was doing a career and also if you're going to do a career you've got to do something that you love right so yeah. I hate reading so being a lawyer would be the last thing that I would want to be doing uh, so absolutely same here yeah <laughs> wait so then can you so advertising because for me when I look at advertising I only see like TVCs like TV commercials like posters but what is really advertising you're just marketing a product or a service but is there things that are behind the scenes that you can share yeah i think when it comes to advertising it's all about like um uh communicating the message right and also communicating the product to be a good advertiser you need to be a good seller like you need to be good in sales because obviously at the end of the day you are selling something whether it's a service or a company or a product you're still selling something it's about trying to sell it the best you can. So what makes a good salesman? Um, I think it's understanding what the consumer wants. That's the most important thing. So if, if someone wants you know, a new car, then you're trying to advertise what they want in life. You know? So lots of cars, for example, will pitch the family lifestyle because maybe the car represents what the family wants to be and where they want to go down the future. So you're selling something to people that is dreaming or make them feel like they're validated and... Because and, and I used to not think that sales was a very important skill to have. And I remember no. I used to even feeling a bit offended when my friend was like, oh, you're a very good salesperson. And I was like, what? I'm not a yeah. salesperson. No, because right, yeah, I same. just imagine like a salesperson is those like really annoying people that like, you know, go and knock on your door and they call yeah. you all the time. But then I realized after being an entrepreneur is that like, it's actually a skill that everybody should have because you're 100%. always selling yourself to yeah. something, whether it's a job application or... Yeah, I mean, like an interview essentially is, I actually thought the exact same. I, I yeah. thought like salesperson was like kind of those people that step, you know, go to door to door yeah. and like, and it was just like a bad thing. But actually it's a huge trait to have. Because, it's a huge trait. Because sell all the, you know, most famous entrepreneurs and they're all sellers, you know, yeah. you've got to learn to sell because if and you can't selling, sell, then you can't make money. Exactly. And I think storytelling is also a very yes. important way to kind of create a narrative over what you're trying to yeah. communicate. Because I think sometimes my team will be like, oh, I don't want to sell and I don't want to sell and whatever. And I'm like, actually, it's not about selling. It's just about sharing a mission or sharing a mm -hmm. story and see whether those people agree with you. And that's kind of just, it's just sharing yeah. ultimately. I mean, like selling is, selling can be anything really. Like from selling a pencil to you know selling a lifestyle, like selling your dream home. Sometimes you need to sell the dream. Like this is where you know you could potentially have this is three bedroom for you and maybe a future uh, little one when mm. you when you're growing up. Or you know, it's about selling that that mm. dream. And I think that's the difference between a good person, a good salesperson, and a bad salesperson. And let's tie that into what you're doing now. Like, how did you decide to start your own company? Um, a resort wear company and all the way to how do you use selling into what you're what is what is it that you're selling now? So I, I started a, a resort wear company. Um, I actually started a swimwear company seven years ago first. Uh, the dream was to kind of, you know, produce uh, swimwear that represents Asia um, and, you know, embraces all the and celebrates all the things that comes from this region. Um, and then as the company progressed and moved on, it was, it was always in the company's business plan to kind of move into resort wear and kind of offer things that are not just swimwear, um, more like things when, when you want to go on holiday. Well, swimwear is just swim shorts, right? Okay. So like swimwear can be just for swimming. But resort wear is, you know, if you're off to Bali or Phuket, it's about what you're going to put in that suitcase when you go to Bali. Eventually, to be kind of that go-to person to uh, if you're going on holiday. Especially in Hong Kong's pace of life is so hectic that people yeah. are always looking for that that relaxed, escape. Yeah, that yeah. escape. So you're kind of selling that lifestyle. Yes. To so that's what I'm selling is that you know it's that escape, that sense of you know dreaming about 
going on holiday, you know, and that idea is, you know, you want to relax with like a, you want to sit on beach chairs and have a Mai Tai and, and uh, just catch a tan and, and unwind and, and refuel and come back to this busy lifestyle, mm -hmm. like either in Bangkok, Singapore, you know, KL, all these big, yep. bu busy city places. So Adam, can you tell us a little bit more about how did you actually start Mazu Resort, right? Because you turned something from just an idea into what you see now, which is amazing. Thank so you. what were those first steps? Like, how do you get started? So I learned a lot from when I worked at the advertising agency uh, about building uh, the concept rather than the idea. And it's all about building a foundation to build multiple different ideas upon. And from that, I looked at different, I did my research into different brands and, and looked at the, the current market and saw how uh, things work. And then from that, I came up with uh, kind of the concept that I created. And because of that concept, I'm able to branch off and create multiple different ideas based upon that. So, Can you share that in the context of Mazu? Like, yeah, you be able so basically to from that, I, like I said, I, um, uh, I did lots of different research and found different things to, to create. And then uh, I came across an idea uh, about maritime history. And the word Mazu comes from the goddess of the sea. And my father wrote a book about temples. Um, and it was from that the concept was built. Um, and I knew before I even did anything about swimwear, it was about building that foundation. So I had to build the backstory. And there were brands that I was very inspired by and looked at like Twining's Tea. Uh, Twining's Tea was only like a five, at the time was like a 10 year old company, but they felt like they were almost 40 years old. And then from that, I was able to create some swim shorts that uh, I was a big, f I thought it was the easiest um, garment to manufacture that didn't take uh, that much knowledge in terms of manufacturing because I'm very, I'm, I'm, my background's not manufacturing. Right. So, because I didn't want to just do a t-shirt because a t-shirt's a very complicated, mm. um, and also it's been done by right. many different things. Yeah. So if I was going to launch a brand, it was about doing something different um, and different that is completely different that's on the market but now. But do you have design background? Like, how do you know how to design something? Because, you I mean, you're in a fashion industry. I, I, I funny enough, don't. So, it, <laughs> literally learn everything as I go. So, wow. uh, learning by your mistakes and just hope that you don't mess up too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, and to this day, I'm still learning. And I think I actually saw Warren Buffett's book and he says that he's still learning. So, from there, I created Mazu Resort Wear and I basically came up with different ideas based upon this foundation that I created. And then it took me about two years to sample and find the right factory, find the right fabric. And I love um, how you mentioned about like Hong Kong has a lot of these trade fairs, right? And I think yeah. that's something that we forget that Hong Kong is actually such a kind of a melting pot for all these like trade shows, exhibitions yeah. in the convention center, that there's so much learning from these industry specific um, events that there is one for manufacturing, there's one for wine, there's one for there's fashion, there's everything. one for there's everything. Yeah. And I think one thing that I always want to bring students to is actually these events because you see the latest of these technology, the latest of these yeah. type of... The, the Hong Kong's the best place when it comes to trade because obviously it's the gateway to China and it is the central hub of Asia from a manufacturing point of view. So all the big trade shows are done in Hong Kong. I went, my first trade show I spent maybe four or five days just going back and forth, looking, talking, feeling, touching, and getting, building your ideas. And I knew what I kind of was looking for. Um, and, and then it was just trying to find the, find the people that can help you execute it. Um, and that, that was the main wow. thing. And what would you say is your biggest learning from this journey of being in entrepreneurship? And what do you wish you had known beforehand going into this? I wish... I knew more about, <laughs> I wish I knew more about business, weirdly enough. Uh, I wish I knew more about um, design. Uh, I think my strongest point is that I'm a good salesperson. Uh, and I may have the worst product in the world or the best product in the world, but a good salesperson can sell anything, you know, 
I, th I think I've got a great product, to be honest. Yeah, like, I, it's I think beautiful. the product sells itself, but yeah. obviously it's very important to sell a good product. And when you say you want to know more, wish you had known more about business, what aspect of business would have helped you? Uh, I never went to business school because I did advertising. So mm -hmm. learning, learning now about how uh, profit and you know, like um, losses, losses, expenses, and expenses like and Allen all, sheet, income all, sheet. Yeah, all these like oh. gross margins and all these terms that like come second nature to me now almost. But um, I wish I knew that bit more for sure. Mm. Um, but that being said, I don't, I don't wish I didn't learn it because yeah. I wouldn't be what I was doing because I think the most important thing to have is that drive. So you can fail, you can start from scratch easily nowadays um, but the best thing to do for any young kid now is just do it if you if you want to sell lemonade on the side of the street go sell lemonade on the side of the street yeah. and see like, what kind of challenges you come up with and what kind of problems way, and issues yeah it, yeah it doesn't have to be come up with a fashion brand it's hot summer stand outside charge 10 bucks for for tea and yeah. You've got a business. Like start developing your business acumen, right? Because yeah, there's I think so, that's much so much in that more process. Important. Like if I was to have a kid one day, I, I would do the same. Like, you know, the value of earning a dollar kind of thing. So true. The most important attribute is to have that go-getting attitude. Mm. Uh, like I said, it's, it's about getting it done. Mm. You know, like just go out and do it. If, you, if you're sitting at home now and... and, and watching this video almost you kind of like you want to just go do it like just go do it like just nothing's stopping you you know just go do it yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so so then so then with that in mind um what are some of the challenges i mean you've been doing this for seven years now yeah still going strong so what are some challenges that you faced back then that might be different from what you challenges you face now or do you have no challenges anymore i think every day is a challenge um especially when you are an entrepreneur because i think you an entrepreneur will put on, will wear multiple different hats, right? So you're learning multiple different trades. My advantage, I think, to me was that uh, a jack of all trades. So based on your experience, do you think that if you had gone to business school, you would have been more equipped? Or would you have rather gone to Better business prepared, school? Better prepared, I think. Setting up my business, I've learned much more than I ever did at any school or any university. That being said, I'm not saying you should drop out of university or school, but I'm such a big advocate of just going out there and doing it and yeah. learning from doing. Yeah. Um, and so with entrepreneurship as what you do now, like, do you see yourself continuing doing this in the future or are there different stages of your lives that you'll be achieving different things? Yeah, I think, of course. If I didn't enjoy what I was doing, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing it. Uh, I keep going, keep striving. It's a lot harder than it was before. I think actually, running your own business is easy. Because the first year of your business is the easiest thing because you're literally going from nothing and everything that you do within the first year is up, 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 mm. up. Like even if mm. it's sell to one person, that's still better than zero. And then it's one year in your second year, then it's like, okay, well, I sold to 100, now I'm going to sell to 200, right? And you're trying to outdo yourself mm. all the time. So for me, starting your own business is easy. People, people say it's hard, it's actually easy. Yeah, it's so true. Nowadays, especially in, with the modern technology, you can, you know, we can hash out a website within hours and start selling on the website within hours if we really wanted to. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's the easy part. It's the, it's the next you know, yeah. five years that's the hard part. So then people may ask, like, so how do you start really your business? Because do you always need capital? to start your business or not what necessarily is your I don't I don't think so I mean like obviously that helps um, depends on your business model and depends what you're you're selling um, or what you're offering like you said you can be someone that resells something and then you don't really need to mm. put that much capital or that much investment into it so like I said um, if we were to sell iced tea maybe we just need to buy the tea you know that's a small investment but you know you make you know obviously you sell it for more than you what you buy yeah. the tea for but that's part of it as well or you probably have to buy cups but um or if you want to use reusable cups and then, then you've got different thing it, it depends yeah. like it like it really depends on the business and what is the proudest moment of yours since you started mazu i still get very 
proud when I see someone that I don't know、mm. wearing my product. I think that is and enjoying it. Like there's no price for that. The ultimate validation almost is like seeing someone that you don't know wear something that you've created, right?、Um, they've obviously bought it from you, or they've been given it to them as a gift, but you don't know who they are. And well, I like to think they're wearing it because they're enjoying it.、Um, and to me, that there's no better feeling.、Mm. That's almost like. You know, winning the World Cup kind of feeling. It's、wow. it's like it's unique. It's one of a kind. You know,、yeah. it's like、uh, it's so validating to to see. I've never. I've only had it maybe a handful of times, which is a bit weird because uh, uh, I spend so much time in the office. Friends will message me like, "Oh, there's this and this at this boat or at this location," and I'm like,、right. "Oh, I don't know who he is." But I've I've only ever seen with my own eyes、yeah. one person wear something that I don't know. Who he was. And what did you do? Did you go up to them? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what did、yeah, you、yeah. say? You're like, hey.、Uh, I was like, I knocked on him. I was like, I love your shorts. He probably looked at me really weirdly, like, who's this、yeah. guy hitting on me or something? And then I was like, no, I'm, I'm the owner of the shorts. And he was like, oh, da, 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 nice to meet you. Da, da, and made sense afterwards. But yeah, yeah like that was、so、quite、beautiful. a good, good feeling to know. I still have that photo. I took a photo with him. Wow.、Uh, I should hang it up. Actually,、It's、yeah. Quite, it was quite a. Memorable moment. That it must be. And and how many shorts have you sold so far? Do you know the number? Oh, since、like、you started in the thousands. In thousands,、yeah. wow. Well, now especially because we have more than just shorts. Yeah, yeah we're. And are you、better. selling these chairs too? Because these chairs are really close.、Cool. Yeah, no, are- these these chairs、uh, are just、uh, advertising. Advertising.、Uh, yeah. To just take to the beach or just for us to do the interview like this, right? Yeah, it's super cool.、Yeah. We're choosing between the couch and these, and we're like, yeah, definitely yeah, these chairs. Comfortable. Yeah. Okay, so what about、um, in terms of you know there are a lot of parents that are really worried about their kids going into entrepreneurship because they're like it's not steady and it's like、yeah. really challenging. Like, what do you say to those parents?、Uh, I say to those parents always. Be as encouraging as you can, because、uh, I think there's nothing worse than an on, for an for an entrepreneurial's point of view is to be told no.、Uh, it depends on your attitude, because if someone tells me no, that just that drives me on to do better. Yeah,、um, but or like I want to prove them wrong, kind、yeah. of thing.、Um, it's difficult. I mean, like I said, it, entrepreneurial is not easy, and like I think. You know, only yeah, what, a handful. Ex- handful of people so actually make it. It's easy to start, but it's not easy to continue on. Continue on, yeah. Or, so yeah. it's challenging, and I, I don't recommend it for anyone. You have to be mentally yeah prepared,、uh, and I guess from a parent's point of view, you just have to be supporting as much as you can.、Um, and thankfully, you know, I have very supporting parents, and、um, yeah, it's yeah, it's tough,、um, but like. I made it on my own. I I didn't really have that much help. All the sales that I did, all the connections I made were through my own network.、Um, old school in the way that like, call on the phone. Hi, Four Seasons. Yeah, okay. Can I come in? Da da da. Like, yep, tomorrow. All right, there. You know, like very old school way,、wow. making all the all the retailers that were sold in,、yeah. all came through just the go get attitude. Yeah. I didn't ask anyone. To like, oh, can you introduce me to this one? Mind you, Lane Crawford was an introduction from someone, but sometimes you need those kind of sometimes, introductions. Sometimes, yeah. But you got to find those people that know those、yeah. connections. So you really have to be so resourceful. Yeah. And I love the fact that you talk about the old school style way because I think sometimes students may not be very comfortable even talking on the phone anymore. But actually,、yeah. that's the best way of communicating. That's the best way of getting a message across because we still appreciate. Hundred percent, and the best human touch. And it's a lot harder for me because there are some resorts that were sold in that I've never been to,、uh, like you know the Maldives. <laughs> the Maldives is the one place I've never been to. It's like my dream place to go to. I've always seen so many amazing photos, and we're sold in like eight different resorts in the Maldives,、wow. and I've never been, and never seen people. But nowadays, even like you can FaceTime people, but. Do not underestimate the power of meeting face to face because、yeah. you know you're a lot more memorable、yeah. from a sales point of view、yeah. um, 
when you put a face to a name to face, right? Or a face to a name. Yeah. Um, so if I can meet people to yeah. sell it, it's better. But again, like I said, it's better just to get on the phone and follow up by an email and follow yeah. up by another phone call. And like I said, uh, you know, eight stores in Maldives, I've never met one person wow. in, in the Maldives. But you just, you just got to call and kind of be nice on the phone and try and be memorable. That's not face to face. That's true. And what do you say to, like, I mean, I'm sure you've had a lot of different challenges and rejections throughout yeah. the time. So how do you see rejection now? Uh, it's tough because the fashion industry is probably the worst place for rejection. Uh, what do you mean by that? Because it's very, they're very, it's, it's very trendy. It's, it's a lot harsher, maybe, arguably. Um, for example, I'm still striving to be on Mr. Porter. Um, I got rejected from Mr. Porter last year, but you know, I know it's a three year process. I'm just going to be keep knocking on that door mm. and like, almost annoy them. Like you said earlier, like you, I'm just going to annoy Mr. Porter to the point where like, you know what, it's time to put my, your stuff, yeah. my stuff on your website, you know, yeah. and I will get there. I will, I have a champagne bottle in the fridge that is dedicated to when I get on Mr. Porter and that's been sitting there for almost seven years because wow. I knew that's where I wanted to be selling. That's obviously the ultimate goal. I mean, one of, one of yep. the yep. goals. So uh, there's still a bottle of champagne in my fridge that is not going to be touched until, until I, Mr. Porter, I'm on Mr. Porter. Adam, we're ready for you now. Yeah, yeah. Let's make that this year, hopefully, with 2020. Yeah. So hopefully I'm going to meet them in the summer, going to try and get them to go again. If You know what? If they say no, try again. Try again. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. To the point where, you know, they, they're going to take you. And persistence is the key when it comes to sales. And, like, you can't let rejection get you down definitely Adam yeah. you know this is what I love about you is that <laughs> since I met you you've always been go 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 you yeah. don't let anything hold you back and I think that's such an inspiring yeah. mindset a mentality for young people to know especially when you say you know you've been waiting for years now and I think a lot of times with such an instant gratification type of lifestyle that we're used to like instant instant yeah. likes and everything like that people are so they, they think that in the real world things are still working like that but yeah. actually in the real world things take so much longer 100 to get anything especially done. when it's fashion because Factories need time to produce, things need time to turn around, whereas technology, especially with apps and things like that, it's so much quicker and so much more spontaneous and things are quick and turn around. But fashion is, as long as, they have fast fashion, but fast fashion still takes four or five, five weeks, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, it just take, it takes time. Fashion takes time, for sure. So um, patience, really. Patience, patience and persistence. persistence yeah, is... and mentally got to be, because. Trust me when I tell you, I've had mental breakdowns. I've, I've thought to myself many a time, why the am I doing this, you know? And you- I've had those moments too. Yeah, we, we're all, I, all entrepreneur people have yeah. had those moments. If you haven't had those moments, you're yeah, not Something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about how you overcome those moments so and true. you keep going and you kind of just keep spirits high. Yeah. Uh, surround yourself with positive people, stay positive and just remember why you're doing this, you know? And that sometimes happens. And I remind that myself that all the time sometimes. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Adam, thank you so much. This has no, been so you. lovely to yeah. talk to you and share your learnings and your wisdom with no, it's my our pleasure. students. Um, so, you know, this show is called Own Your Future. And yeah. I only invite people that are owning their future and you're yeah. clearly one of them. So what is one tip that you can share with people about how to own their future? Uh, I think it goes re, re, revalidate my point about just go get it. Like, I think if you want something, uh, just go get it. If you want to be a football star, go, go be a football star. If you want to start your own business, start your own business. If you want to, you know, um, work for Deutsche Bank or JP Morgan, go, go work for them. If that's what your dream is, go, go do it. Like, there's nothing stopping you. Um, the only thing stopping you is you. Um, yeah, I think that's the best, the best thing. Thank you, Adam. I think it's now time. To relax. For us to relax. Oh, thank God. Oh, finally. The interview's over. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Oh.